Have you ever made a promise? Ever made a promise? Sometimes we make promises when we're very young, when we're children. Maybe we'll make a promise to a good friend in the playground, in the street, and uh, that can be quite cute, can't it? Yeah. It's nice to make promises, isn't it? Nice to see that uh, we're reaching out to others in trust. Have you ever made a promise perhaps later on in life, a little bit later on, in marriage? We make those solemn vows, don't we? Those promises to one another as husband and wife. Maybe there are promises later on in life when perhaps someone's dying and somebody is asked to pass on something by the dying person. And the person who survives is saying, yes, I promise, I will pass that on. I will do that that you ask me. I will live that way. I will do what I'm being told to do. Now, promises. Well, there's a promise here. There's a promise in this text that we're looking at tonight, on this Pentecost Sunday evening. Here in John 14, Jesus is speaking. Jesus has already shared of how he is going away. But he's not going to leave them on their own. He says this in verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor. He will. He will. This is the promise of Jesus. So this is Jesus doing the promising. Sometimes when we make promises, we intend to keep them at the time, but we don't always keep them, do we? But this is Jesus doing the promising, and we can truly trust Jesus. So he says to his disciples, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. This is the promise. This is the promise of permanence. Three big points tonight. And that's the first one. It's the promise of permanence. The Spirit, the other counsellor, another counsellor to be with you forever. Now some of those we might have made promises to in this life are not with us anymore. That's the problem with earthly relationships. We cannot guarantee permanence. But when it comes to God, because he is from eternity to eternity, we know that when he makes a promise, to be with us, he can guarantee that it will happen. We have no choice in some ways over how long we live. We can't, there's no tick box and say, I'm going to live for every day that you will live. I can't guarantee that I'll be alive every day that you're alive and vice versa. But with the Lord, we know that every day we're alive, he will be here. And the other side of the grave, he will be with us there too. We can guarantee his permanence. We can guarantee this counsellor, this helper, being with us forever. These are the words of Jesus. He goes on in verse 17, and he calls him there another name, the Holy Spirit, counsellor, but also spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Now, when other people perhaps look at you, if you're already a Christian, they might think of you as, well, you know, a religious person, you go to church, maybe you go a bit overboard on the stuff about the Bible and Christian things. But they do not accept the Holy Spirit because they don't see him. Because they don't see him, neither do they know him. 
But Jesus says to his disciples, you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. At that time, they accompanied, they were accompanied in a particular way by the Holy Spirit, but not in the way that they would be after the day of Pentecost. And there he says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. I think it's at least twice in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, where the Holy Spirit is given another name, and he's called the Spirit of Jesus. And this is what we see here. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. This is the Holy Spirit accompanying their work, their mission, their whole lives. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, says Jesus, but you you will see me. And so where the disciples are seeing the activity of God through the Holy Spirit in different ways, we can read about that in the Acts of the Apostles and, and other letters uh, of, of, the, of the New Testament. We see the working of God there. And they will say, there's the work of Jesus. That's the handprint of Jesus. That's the work of God going on. That's Jesus' work. You will see me, he says, because I live, you also will live. So it's not simply the, the promise of permanence, but that's a good thing in itself, isn't it? Of course, that God is with us. God is with us always, but it's a, a promise of his presence, that he will be with you and will be in you. On that day, verse 20, you will realise that I'm in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. These are deep words, aren't they? Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. The promise of presence of God himself being present in us, in his disciples. Promise of his presence. Now at that time, this disciple Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show us, so, so yourself to us and not to the world? Because it seems by the way Jesus is speaking, it's as if it's just to you, you as disciples, those people gathered, those people hearing this message. And that's why he says, Lord, why do you intend to show us yourself, show yourself to us and not to the world? And of course, Jesus opens it wide there and says, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. That's the sign. That's the sign of true love, is obedience. We've been talking about that a few times recently, haven't we? We don't obey because there's threat of punishment. We shouldn't obey because of a reward. We obey because there is love involved. If you love me, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. And here, here is this deep presence. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Spirit of Jesus, make our home with him. So many people in the world look for a home, look for identity, look for people that they can feel at home with. Sometimes people have a, a broken home and they run away from that and they look for companionship in a gang in their neighbourhood. They look in the wrong place. They're looking for the right thing in the wrong place in some ways. The home that all of us need, whether we had a perfect upbringing, whether we had a great home life, 
whether we've got a really approachable parents and siblings and everything like that. Every single one of us needs to be in this relationship. God, the Father and the Son, making our home with us. Coming to us by his Spirit, making him, making our, his home in us. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. It's clear cut, isn't it? It is so clear. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. That's the amazing thing of, of Jesus coming as a servant. Jesus coming in such humility as a human that in various ways he gave up various powers so that he would be fully human and yet fully divine. So it's the promise of permanence, the promise of his presence. He goes on to say this in these next verses. Verse 25, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. <clears throat> now this was initially for those disciples. Initially that was worked out in their lives. Teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So they could get out preaching. They could also furnish the gospel writers with all these different accounts. And some came from others, I know that. But they knew these things, they could remember these things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit worked in them. And they were taught all things. All that they needed to know was taught them by the Holy Spirit. Now today, he can still be our teacher. It won't be the same for us because we haven't walked and talked with Jesus and seen the miracles and seen all that work that he did there and then be reminded of that. This won't be worked out in quite the same way. And yet, of course, he needs to be our teacher, our revealer, the one who reveals who Jesus is, reveals our sin, reveals his sinlessness, his perfection, and reveals all these other truths to us of as we go on through life that we need to confess that we need to repent not just the once not just when we first turn to the Lord but again and again we have a lifetime of repenting otherwise we grow proud and so it is that we need to be those who are taught all these things by the Holy Spirit and also that he reminds us of these things. He won't be reminded because we've lived them already but because we've heard them. Perhaps we've heard them at church in a service like this, perhaps it's because we've read them at home in our Bibles or, or, or we heard a, a service on the internet. But the Holy Spirit can remind us as well of those truths that he's already shared with us. Part of his work and the promise of his presence in us. That's a good thing, isn't it? But we need to cultivate this. We don't just say, oh, that's good, and get on with our lives. If we truly love him, we will be obeying his teaching. To, obeying, to obey his teaching is to be in the word. It is to, to live it out, isn't it, daily? It is not to leave it to one side. But as we read in uh, Psalm 1, that the person who meditates on it day and night, he is like the tree planted by streams of water. He's the one who's always growing, flourishing. His leaf doesn't wither, always in season, always strong and healthy. It's not an impossibility. It's what the Lord wants. 
So focus on here. And if you're feeling defeated by that, uh, that's the last thing I want you to do. I'm simply saying, this is what the Lord wants to work in you. So he, the, the, the Holy Spirit will teach you these things and will remind you of what we have heard already. Of course, we need to be here in church to know that. We need to be reading our Bibles in the first place regularly, don't we, for him to remind of what we already know. If we're not reading, if we're not attending, um, then we're not going to be, um, the Holy Spirit hasn't got that to work on, has he? Yeah, we need to be in his word and with his people. So the promise of permanence, the promise of, of, of presence, of his presence. And then lastly, the promise of peace. This is in verse 27, our last verse tonight, John 14, 27. And Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. With these things together, with these different attributes together of the permanence of the presence of the Holy Spirit, but also the peace, the peace within a situation that we won't naturally choose. Difficult circumstances in life, whatever it might be, maybe we've got something harrowing going on in our own minds, in terms of our own mental health. But the promise of peace, of the Lord being there by his spirit in the midst of that storm. Not taking us away from that difficulty, but being with us as we are in that difficulty. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. My peace. It's his to give, isn't it? his to give he is the one who has all power and authority and rule in his hand we know that uh, one of the parts of the fruit of the spirit is peace and so he can say peace I leave with you my peace I give you and I do not give to you as the world gives and that is clear that is clear do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Some people would rather, perhaps Jesus was standing here with us, but no, he sends his spirit. He can, he, he can be with us all, each, wherever we are, whether we're all together in the same room or whether we're in 15 different places. Each one of us can be occupied by him. Each one reminded of the truths of Jesus. Each one taught new things. Each one having this sense of, yes, permanence. This is the friend, the helper, the counsellor who will never leave me. Whatever happens to others. This is the one whose presence I will feel and know and I can believe that he is there whether I feel him or not. I believe the promise of God's work. And the promise of peace, he will be with me wherever I am and whatever difficulty I am in. In the next book of the Bible, in fact that very time when the day of Pentecost came and at the end of Peter's sermon to those gathered that day. He talks about the promise as well. The promise that we've been talking about today, 
And he says this in, uh, in verse 38 of Acts 2. Peter replied, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And that's amazing, isn't it? Because that statement that stretches out right until now, until whatever future is ahead of now as well. For you, your children, for all who are far off and all whom the Lord our God will call. The promise, the promise, the promise of the, of the, of the Spirit of Jesus coming to us and being one with us and us being one with him until we meet the Lord Jesus. We've got it planned out. It's good, isn't it? It's good news. It doesn't leave us alone, doesn't leave us as orphans in any age. So uh, I hope that you are encouraged by hearing about the promise tonight and you will stick close to him. You will obey the Lord, you will show that you love him by obeying his teaching. And you'll know those blessings of permanence of his presence and of his peace. Always. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father God, we praise you for your word. We trust you implicitly. And Father, we pray that uh, we would enjoy the truths that we've been thinking about tonight. Uh, may we know the fullness of your presence with us as we look into your word, as we see its riches, as we see your character and, and long to be made more like your son Jesus. As your spirit moves in us, may we and particularly others see the fruit of the spirit in us. Thank you for Pentecost and we thank you uh, that we too uh, can have our Pentecost as it were, where the Spirit comes to us, where, where we are born again and where we uh, know uh, newness of life and we start walking with you. May we continue on boldly, strongly in your strength till our dying day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.